Hey everyone, my name is Alex and welcome to another Civilization 6 video. Now in today's video, we're taking a look at Hammurabi and Babylon because they are the next save coming to Civilization 6 and today the trailer announcement dropped for them giving details of their bonuses and things like that. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to break down the save. I'm going to look at each individual bonus, hopefully give you some things you missed in the trailer and that weren't explicit in the trailer, as well as giving a few tips, tricks and also a bit of history in a couple of places so maybe you will learn something about them. So to start off with, I thought it'd be good to take like a 30 second look at their leader because lots of you probably don't know anything about him. So I thought it'd be cool to dive in. So Hammurabi in real life was the sixth king of the first Babylonian dynasty and reigned from roughly 1792 to 1750 BC, which is obviously a very, very long time ago. Now, perhaps one of his greatest achievements was his Code of Hammurabi, essentially a code of law which dealt with loads of things ranging from wages to divorce, plus much, much more. And that makes it one of the earliest documents of its type in the world. So that's kind of a very, very big achievement. He did other things too, like expand Babylonian territory, but his Code of Law is generally considered his biggest achievement. And just on him as a leader as well, Lots of fans seem very happy that it's him that was chosen to lead ba Babylon, so I'm pretty happy and excited that he got the nod for this one. So let's move on now and take a look at the bonuses themselves and give analysis and thoughts and stuff. So the first thing we've got to look at with Babylon is its unique civ ability, which is Unuma Anu Enlil. I hope I pronounced that right. And this means that Eurekas for Babylon provide all of the science for technologies, which is obviously massive. However, just as big... Babylon also gets minus 50% science per turn. So let's break it down. So the first thing I want to mention on this is that it is a big change and makes Babylon's playstyle particularly unique compared to most other civilizations, in my opinion. And that's cool. It's nice to see that Firaxis, with these last few civilizations we're probably getting in the game, are trying different things out and trying to make them completely different um, as, as playstyles. And we've seen that with a few of the other civs that have come out in the New Frontiers Pass. But what it does mean is that this bonus is really defining to whether you'll enjoy playing as Babylon or not. So now looking at how good I think this bonus is, let's first of all talk about Eureka's providing all the science, because this is something you're going to have to get right. So, what I would say on this is that firstly, and this is for the whole civilization basically, if you know what you're doing, play as Babylon. If you know that wonders like the Great Library and other such scientific wonders are going to help you massively with Eurekas, and if you know your way around great people and you know what wonders to build for great people, etc, etc, go for it. Because that sort of stuff, along with using espionage, is what's going to allow you to gain a big, big march in um, in certain technologies. And it's going to help you really, probably, against other players, make the most of this bonus and make it really worthwhile using. However, one thing which really jumps out at me with this bonus is it widens the skill um, level in this game sort of thing. Because if maybe that wasn't the right way of putting it but what i'm trying to say is if you're a really great player or a good player this is going to help you massively if you're not so good i mean i'm not the best at the game but if you don't know to to your head what wonders you should be building and things like that to get um, great scientists etc etc this is going to punish you because the minus 50 percent science per turn is a massive it is a penalty that if you can't make the most out of your Eurekas is going to hurt you a lot. So that is what I would say overall for this bonus. However, even if you're not such a great player, there are a couple of tips I would really give you with this. So firstly, this bonus, if you plan it out well, could help you get to certain technologies to help you gain a military advantage on your rivals. Because if you can plan it out, probably even before you start the game, of which Eurekas you're going to get, to get to certain techs that may be uh, militaristically advanced, you're just going to be have a more advanced army than your rivals, and then you can march in and use your science advantage um, to conquer them. And that's obviously going to help you as well to, to catch up with that minus 50%. So plan your route ahead. Make sure you know where you want to go with your science, and plan which Eurekas you're going to need and how you're going to get them. That's the first thing I'd say. Another thing I'd like to sort of give a tip on as well is that Obviously, with it being um, a Eureka-focused bonus, 
the longer your game length, the better chance you've got of making the most of it. So if you're playing on Marathon, for example, you've got a lot more time to get these Eurekas and therefore you're going to have a lot more time to to make use of them. So if you're playing on uh, online game speed, you're going to have less chance to actually make use of it. But if you're playing on a longer game speed, then Babylon's going to be even more powerful because you're surely going to be able to get more of the Eurekas. Overall, this bonus really is sort of hit and miss, in my opinion. It's hit for people that know the game. It's hit for people that already get lots of great scientist points and therefore get lots of great scientists. And it's hit for people that know their way around um, getting Eurekas and know the best way to do it. It is, however, in my opinion, a big miss for people who don't know the game that well yet, that are still learning a lot of stuff about the game. And although you can try it, and if you do try it, one thing I would suggest is really plan ahead. Do some planning with this. There are, in my opinion, better sieves, and sieves that are going to be more fun to play as for a more casual fan. So Hammurabi's ability is Ninu Illu Serum, which means when each specialty district type except the government plaza is constructed for the first time, players receive the lowest production cost building that can currently be constructed in that district and also receive an envoy when any other district is constructed for the first time. So this means that basically the first time you build a specialty district, you'll get the first building free. So the first time you build a campus, you'll get a library free, and the first time you build a holy site, you will get a shrine free. Now, that is okay. Obviously, it could be useful and it's nice to get free buildings. I'm not going to knock it. And one tip I would actually give here is if you want to play Babylon for a, a religious victory, you'll get a shrine free in your holy site, which could be useful. But then again, I guess if you were going for a religious victory, um, you'd, you'd play as a different sieve. But it's okay. It's an okay bonus. And one thing I want to mention here as well is that the envoy part of the bonus for, for districts which aren't campuses or holy sites, etc. Or, or, or commercial hubs, um, the extra envoy is okay as well. It's quite good because, especially since I started really appreciating the value of city-states, extra envoys will be useful and will help you keep that influence and get them bonuses from across um, your continent and maybe further afield. However, although I say this bonus is okay because it boosts your yields, especially in the early game, it'll be useful. But it has no longevity, really. When you get past the midpoint in the game, is this going to be that useful? And what you've always got to remember here is we're comparing these bonuses to bonuses from other sieves, which are undoubtedly stronger. So my big problem here is that the bonus has no longevity. And overall, just looking at it, and maybe you'll think differently. If you do, let me know in the comments. But overall, I just think it's like underwhelming, really. So Babylon's unique unit is the Sabum Kibitub, and this is a unique ancient era melee unit which gives plus 17 combat strength against heavy and light cavalry units. The unit also has 3 movement and sight. So, the trailer suggests, and these are a few things you may not have picked up on, but to me the trailer suggests that this is going to be a standalone unit. It's not a warrior replacement, and I'm pretty sure it's not going to be a swordsman replacement. So this is very much... I think, a brand new unit rather than a unit replacement. And another thing I want to mention is that it looks like its base melee strength is only going to be 17. So I think a warrior's base melee strength is 20. So just in normal combat, this isn't going to be so strong. However, I have put together a few pros and a few cons. And I kind of explain how excited or unexcited I am about this unit at the end. So... Pros. In the ancient era, it will be very good at combating cavalry. And the reason for that is obviously the plus 17 combat strength against cavalry units, which means that if you come up against cavalry units from barbarians on their own, or more importantly from another civilization, you're going to be able to probably fight that off with ease with that bonus. And another point to this is that, don't forget, it's got bonus mobility and bon or bonus movement, which gives it extra mobility, and bonus sight. And these are two things which are important because Cavalry thrives because it's got more movement points than any other units as much as anything else. So being able to match that as well, in my opinion, is something we shouldn't underplay. A final thing I want to mention on the pros front is that the extra era score early on might allow you to get an early golden age, which is always useful. However, there are certainly cons to this unit 
and cons which make me not so excited. So overall, I'm quite underwhelmed by it. And the reason I'm quite underwhelmed by it is, well, basically, I don't think it's going to be that useful for that long. I think this unit is very quickly going to become irrelevant. And a lot of the more exciting units we've got in the New Frontiers Pass and in Civ 6 on a whole, they're just more useful for, for longer. And they're actually just probably going to be more fun to use. Like, this, to me, is not that exciting. It's a defensive unit which takes the spark off anyway. But overall, I think you probably just, as soon as you get Spear, but wouldn't this be invalid apart from the extra movement? I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what you think, but overall, I'm just not very excited to this, but maybe you'll think differently. The final part of the bonus I want to talk of is the Palgum, which is a building unique to Babylon. It gives plus one housing and plus two production, and it also gives fresh water tiles plus one food. However, a city must be adjacent to a river because obviously it's a water mill replacement. So the first thing I want to say is this is okay. Finding your cities next to rivers is going to be important, but overall it's okay. The extra, extra production, especially in the early game, is nice. And obviously across the course of, of a full game, getting one extra production per turn is going to be very, very useful compared to what you'd get with the standard water mill. So I always like production. I, I always think we've got to appreciate production because if you're pay, playing 250 turns, for example, that's another 250 um, production you'll get um, in the game, which which is a lot. The next thing to mention is the extra food is great too. And it will actually help you grow some really great cities if, if you're good with city planning and city settlements. This will be enhanced with the extra housing you get. So the additional one housing will be useful when trying to grow your cities bigger and better by, by using this building. Overall, just like big parts of the sieve, it's okay. I, I, I may be a bit underwhelmed because I'd be more excited about lots of the other buildings and districts we've got through Civ 6. But I think this is okay. For me, it's stronger than the last two bonuses I discussed, so it's okay. Nothing too exciting, but not terrible. So overall, this is a civilization which is shaping up to be good for skilled players, but if you're not so familiar with Civ 6 and all the wonders and how to get the maximum number of Eurekas, you should probably avoid this one for now, but if you are going to have a go, I'd certainly recommend putting a lot of planning time into it. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you want to see another one of our Civ 6 videos, then check out the video in the box below. Also, make sure you subscribe for lots of reaction content once this expansion pack does come out, including videos on the city states, the Civ, and lots more. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex, and I will see you in another video soon.